So I am here today to do my top 15 books of 2015 and I'm so excited to tell you guys all of these because I think you should read every single one. They are all utterly incredible and really really worth your time. Definitely go and check them out and find out a little bit more about them if you want to but I would highly 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 recommend each and every one of these books. Now not all of these were published in 2015 but they are all books that I read in 2015 and absolutely adored. I definitely know which one is my favourite of the year but honestly these are all so worth your time. I mean just buy them all already because they're fantastic. Let's get started. These are not going to be in any order other than I will finish up with my favourite one. The first one is one that I read very recently. It is Monstrous issue number one. This is by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda and it is incredible. I absolutely adore the art style of this. I think the back of this is stunning and I just think that the interior art style is absolutely just flabbergasting to be honest I, I just adore it the story is incredible it is a bit dark in places I'm trying to find a page that isn't too gory to show you but there's quite a lot of gore um so if you don't like gore maybe not one for you but nope there's a severed head on that one okay here's a nice page <laughs> it's definitely Japanese inspired it's definitely one that is just so beautiful to read through has some really really quirky characters definitely has a sort of manga influence to it or Japanese influence but oh my gosh it is exceptional there is one page in here that I absolutely love this page is just so beautiful I love that city scene and then there's this little fox character down here Oh, I love this character. It is the best character. So of course, I would highly recommend this. It's still ongoing. There's only two issues out right now, so you can jump on board right away, or you can wait for the volume to come out, but it is so good. You have to all add it to like your to-buy list right now, if you haven't got it on there already, because it's marvellous. The next one that I have to recommend, I don't actually have with me, because I've lent it to one of my friends, and that is Lazarus Volume 3, which is called Conclave. I love this one. It's probably my favourite of the three that are out so far. It's by Greg Rucker and it's a really, really exceptional series. It's about this lady who is kind of the feminine kick-ass bodyguard for this family and she has to go out and do all of their odd jobs for them and errands and kind of kill people and do all nasty things like that. But she's an exceptionally awesome character and her storyline is a lot more complicated than just what I've said. And the art style in this isn't my favourite, but the story is great and I absolutely adore it. I think it's just so worth reading. I do also think that the composition of the panels in these books are incredible. This has one of the best fight scenes I've ever seen in any graphic novel. It really, really flowed. It was really solid. It was just such a good story. So definitely check out the Lazarus series if you haven't already. It is so wonderful. So, so wonderful. The next one that I have is one I just read and that is The Arrival by Sean Tan. It is so good, guys. So good. Honestly, one of the best graphic novels I've ever encountered. It's all told through pictures, so there is no actual text within this, but look at the detail of these. I mean, it's so good. It's kind of steampunky. It's set in this really peculiar, bizarre world. You follow lots of different characters, but there's one main character who you're following, his adventure, and it's just such an exceptional, exceptional story, and the art is incredible. I mean, look at these end papers. It's just gorgeous, guys, and the story definitely touched my heart, and this little creature that you see on the front is part of the story, so it does have a slight fantastical feel to it. It's won a lot of prizes, and I definitely think it's worth winning a lot of prizes, because it's probably my top graphic novel of the year, honestly. Really, really is. It's such a good one. Another one that I would highly, highly recommend checking out is Porcelain Bone China. This is volume two in the Porcelain series by Benjamin Reed and Chris Wild Goose. I would suggest you check out both of the volumes because I gave them both five stars. But this one I liked a tiny bit more, I think. It was just so good, so interesting and great continuation of the story. I am so excited that there is going to be a third one. I could not believe my excitement when I got to the end of this and discovered that. So definitely check this one out. Again, the artwork in 
in this is absolutely stunning. The artwork, the colouring and the actual style within this is really, really beautiful. The characters are exceptionally well drawn and definitely have a personality and a vibrance and a life to them. So I would 100% check this out if I were you and if you like sort of fantastical character driven stories then this really connects you with characters as well and I think it's a really great series. It does have a bit of a steampunky feel to it as well which is awesome because I really like steampunk stuff. The next one that I have is also an illustrated one. This is the illustrated Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and this is by JK Rowling illustrated by Jim Kay. Could not get my hands on this quick enough really. It's so beautiful inside every illustration is stunning and I think that the whole thing is just very very beautiful and it's a really new experience of reading it because it's got a different format for the text and it's also got some pages like this but you can still see that there's like paint around the edges so even though it has some pages that are full text it also has some pages that are just halfway text and it has a few pages which are also just completely image based or blacked out and stuff like that so it's such a such a fantastic book for anyone and everyone of all ages people in the world just anyone who can read should try this because it's incredible and I love it and reading it with illustrations was just the best reliving ever. Next up I actually have a type of book that's never been in my top of the year so far but this one is and that is a non-fiction book. This is In Order to Live by Yonmi Park and I'm so happy that I got this. I requested this off the publisher and I just I'm so glad that I did. I would have bought it anyway probably but they were kind enough to send it to me. It's just such a hard-hitting emotional book. It really really takes a bit of your heart when it leaves you and it just made me think so much more about Korea and North Korea in particular and everything that's going on out there and sort of how I wasn't very aware of it before reading this and trying to educate myself more about these sorts of things that are happening in the world. So I do have a few more North Korean based books now which I'm so happy about and very very thankful to this book for sort of opening my eyes and introducing me to the world of North Korea and what's going on there. So if you're looking for a great non-fiction I would highly recommend this one. The Skull Throne, it is by Peter V. Brett, it's book number four in the series. The fifth one should be out fairly soon, I hope. I'm so excited for whenever it does come out because this one was exceptional. I whizzed through this in about a day and a half, maybe even less than a day actually, and it was just so good guys. I fully fell in love with it all over again, fell in love with the characters, fell in love with the world, but I already love it and I've been desperate to get my hands on the fifth one ever since reading this, so it is an exceptional series. It's very, very cool. And I don't understand why more people don't read this series, but it is so good. So definitely check it out if you haven't already. It starts with the painted or warded man, depending on whether you are in the UK or the US. In the US, it's the warded man. In the UK, it's the painted man. Don't know why, but that's how it is. The Death of Dolgath, which is by Michael J. Sullivan. This is book number three in the Riaria Chronicles series, which is the prequel series to the original. And I really, really, really love this. I actually backed this on Kickstarter and I just had the best time. And so it is signed, which I am very, very happy about. I think Michael J. Sullivan is a lovely guy. I've spoken to him multiple times on Twitter and Goodreads and he just seems like a nice, nice, lovely guy. And I'm so happy that he managed to get this out before the new year. And I read it a while back and just it was fantastic. So yeah, loved it, loved it, loved it. I think Hadrian and Royce are some of the most fun, lighthearted, amusing, excellent characters I've ever met. And I think all of the characters in this are great. So much good stuff in the series. If you haven't read it yet, any of the Riaria books, definitely check out the Riaria Revelation series first. But I would highly recommend that you get through all six of them because it's such a good series, guys. Check it out. Next up, I have A Memory of Light, which is by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson. This is book number 14 in the Wheel of Time series. And I have to have this one in because I never really thought I would finish the Wheel of Time. But I did. And I finished it in 2015. And uh, I just, I loved it so much. I mean, the first few books are excellent. The middle few go a little bit downhill, but the last few are also excellent. It's just a series that will always stay with me. It's kind of an integral part of fantasy for me and it definitely opened my eyes to what I like and what I don't like and and it's just so good, guys. Like, it's just one of those series that I will always have 
as a memory and I'm so happy to have finished the series this year. I absolutely loved it and I just needed to put this in for the nostalgia factor of actually having finished the Wheel of Time series at last, oh my goodness. The next one that I have is obviously got to be a Sanderson book and that is Firefight by Brandon Sanderson. This was definitely the best book that I read by him all year. It's the second one in the Reckoners series and I'm so happy that the third one is coming out very early in 2016 because I adored this. It was so much better than the first one. I really enjoyed the first one but it was more of a like fun read whereas this one was really good and I got so into this and I was predicting what was going to happen or trying to and it was just such an adventure. So many surprises I didn't anticipate, so many surprises that I thought were coming and didn't so it was really exciting to see whether I was going to guess right or wrong and I just had the best time reading it and Sanderson is always always in my top he just manages to sneak in there somehow all the time so I really enjoyed this and I cannot wait for the next one in the series to come out I didn't enjoy the Mistborn book that he released this year quite as much as I did this one so that one didn't really get into my top books but this one is exceptionally good and I cannot wait to read more of his stuff especially in this series and the Stormlight series because I'm sure they're both going to be excellent. The next one that I have is The Hunter's Kind by Rebecca Levine. This is book two in the Hollow God series and it's such a good series guys. It is really really interesting, very original take on fantasy, definitely has this sort of moving tribe idea so there's lots of different tribes that you focus on and this book just ramped up and up. The first book was really excellent, the second book was amazing, mind-blowing. I just loved it. I am so excited for the next book in the series whenever that comes out and I think that the covers of these are excellent too so just everything about it really was utterly fabulous and I think it's just such a good good series please do check it out it's really fantastic. The next one that I have is The Broken Eye which is by Brent Weeks this is an exceptional read it's the third one in the Lightbringer series I absolutely fell in love with the series over and over again this year because I read all three of them this year I believe by far this one was my favourite the ending of this I just <sighs> I despair I need the next one like desperately need the next one in this series it's so much fun and the fourth one is going to be exceptional I think judging off of how good this one was and I uh, just I need it I don't know when the fourth one comes out of this but I just I need it right now because it's such a good series I absolutely love the colour system for the magic it's just a really really complex very interesting one and when you wrap your head around it it's so exciting and the characters have definitely evolved over the books and it's just really really fun so definitely check this series out it's one that I think anyone who likes Sanderson will probably like Brent Weeks and vice versa. The next one that I have again I do not actually have my physical edition here with me because I have lent it to my friend Lauren and that is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers which was probably the best science fiction I've ever read in my life. It had a bit of absolutely everything. It had the space opera feel, it had the sci-fi vibe, it also had aliens, it had so many different diverse races of people namely the aliens and it was just so good at making you feel great when you were reading it. It made me smile so many times, it made me laugh, it made me happy, it made me excited, it just it gave you all these kind of warm fuzzy feelings that you don't really get a lot when you're reading books or at least not fantasy books because they're usually quite depressing but this one was excellent and I just adored it throughout and I think everyone who's read it has really enjoyed it. I don't think I know anyone who hasn't. Yeah it's just it's really really good and I cannot wait to see what she brings out next because I think she's writing a companion series or a companion book to this so I'm so excited for that and I'm sure it's going to be incredible. The next one that I have is Scarlet Tides. This is by David Hare. It is the second book in the Moontide Quartet and it was amazing. The first book in the series was great. I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars. This one ramped up the energy again and again and again and the characters grew so much. The progression of the characters and the world and the magic in this book is excellent. David Hare can write. Like you need to check this guy out if you haven't because he is an exceptional writer and I do not know why more people have not got to his books and tried his stuff out because it is so good guys, so good. Please do check this series out. If you like Game of Thrones but you want something that's even more diverse than Game of Thrones and does fantasy just that tiny bit better in my opinion, check this series out because it's so so wonderful and has so many great characters and moments and 
it's amazing. Just check it out. <laughs> and now we come to the final moment where we discuss my favourite book of the year, which probably isn't going to be too hard for you to guess if you've been following my channel for a while, but it is Fool's Fate by Robin Hobb. I adored this. I was sobbing my heart out for a majority of this book, actually. I think from the halfway point onwards, I was just... I was just gone. I was just in floods and floods of tears. I literally went through a whole packet of tissues crying my way through this book. It is an emotional roller coaster. It packs a punch. It is hard hitting. This is the ninth book in the Realm of the Udling series. It's the third book in the Tawny Man trilogy and it's the third book in the third trilogy by Robin Hobb. So the first trilogy is the Farsia books and the second trilogy is the Live Ships and the third one is Tawny Man. So you probably need to go through all eight of the previous books in the realm of the Eldlings before getting to this one for it to have quite an emotional impact as it did with me but oh my goodness it is worth it because she can write she can write she can write and she is such a good author I cannot believe that I hadn't even discovered her work until this year like I just don't know what I was doing but I am so utterly in love with Robin Hobb and her writing. I will definitely be checking out anything she publishes in the future and 100% be trying out some of her Megan Lindholm work too because I think it will be really interesting to do so and compare them. And I just thought this was such an incredible read from start to finish. I was hooked and I was interested and it's amazing. You guys will probably know that I did say that my second favourite of the year was her other book, which is Fool's Assassin. I will still stand by that but I wanted to only include one book by each author so this is my favourite of Robin Hobb's books that I've read this year but had I read those two books in two different years that one would have got top spots so just so you all know that's why it's not on this list but please check out Robin Hobb if you haven't already because she's definitely my favourite author. That's quite a bold statement but I'm gonna go there. She definitely is and she's exceptional and I think her books are perfect so do go and check them out and then come back and squee and let me know what you thought of them as well. So those are my top 15 books for 2015. They are all so worth your time. If any of them sounded even remotely interesting then please do check them out or if you've already got some on your shelves then please pick them up sooner rather than later. You will not regret it. They are all so wonderful, the writers are all excellent and the stories within those books will make you fall utterly in love and just break your heart all at once so please do let me know what your top book of the year was and if you've done a top 15 in 2015 video then please let me know about it and link it I'd love to watch a few of you and I shall see you all again soon in another video bye me and you gonna have a little chat about the